I do apologise if I'm a little bit nasally. I've, uh, yeah, sinus problems. There's a few people out there having the same issues that time of the year. So if I sound a bit funny, sorry about that. This is just going to be a quick video on debt collectors. I have listened to so much about what Mark Darwin and Adrian Brannock have said about debt collectors and how they said they know so much. And it's like they, they are misleading people so, so much. And uh, I've been meaning to do this video for a while because um, there's two sides to debt collection. And the side that most of us know in debt collection is completely different to what Mark Darwin and Adrian Brannock describe. What Adrian Brannock and Mark Darwin describe is using banks, credit organisations, and an inherent weakness or flaw that they actually have in their system whereby, um, tell me, anyone that's ever had um, their house taken back from them, you go and get a credit check done on yourself. Is, your, um, is that listed on your credit check? that you defaulted on your mortgage and the house was repossessed? No, it's not actually on your credit report, on your credit history, because banks, credit cards and lending institutions do not list any of their bad debts. And as I will explain, they do sell them on but your ordinary day-to-day -day debt collection that we all understand is as debt collection. Companies like Dun & Bradstreet have not bought the debt. The person that is owed the money comes to Dun & Bradstreet and asks them much as you would ask an accountant or a solicitor to perform a specific task. They give the Dun & Bradstreet written authority, the permission to act on their behalf and collect that debt. So at no stage do Dun & Bradstreet own the debt. They haven't called anyone on the phone to claim their money back. They are always calling on behalf of the client who has requested and given signed authority to Dun & Bradstreet to collect that money on their behalf, to deal with it. And as I said, much as you would contract a solicitor or an accountant or any other professional to perform uh, a function within your business, if you do not have the skills to collect the debts effectively, this is where a business like Dun & Bradstreet comes in because they are effective. I worked at Dun & Bradstreet, or D&B, in the Commercial Collections Department for several years. On the floor above was the Credit Reporting Department, where all they did was, as is highlighted here, do credit reporting. They would go to ATSIC, do extracts, they would get all the information they can there, and then they will physically start to research all the directors involved and do a complete history around that company and what's involved. And I mean, they are very extensive. You've also got the, the reporters, uh, certain ones of them, like you have to understand that each department is large and they would have allocated um, functions within that department just as it was in the collections division. So in the reporter division there would be court reporters. that would Their job was to go down and sit in court each day and record any information that was extra from them witnessing it. And that was their job. I mean, pretty much they cover every court listing and gradually as time has gone on 
I mean, I've seen movies, black and white movies, where they talk about Town of Bradstreet. I mean, it's been around for a long time. And it used to be more that, you know, that if they wanted to check you out, you know, whether you were good enough to marry into the family or had any bad things known against you, they would check you out with Dun and Bradstreet. And this is the mindset of, you know, back in the black and white colour TV days. So Dun and Bradstreet and other debt collectors the ones that you understand where your debts will get listed at credit reporting agencies and affect your credit rating, um, they do not own the debts. They are acting purely on behalf of the authority given to them by their client to collect the debt on their behalf. And the way it works, there's several different tiers that you you buy in, you can become an annual member with um, the actual, uh, you get a personal collector and an account manager. The personal collector is the one that will ring up the debtor and the account manager is the one that deals with the personal collector and handles the client as well. And both of those people will receive a commission for successful debts collected. There's an office target. Uh, people work really well together. Well, they did when I was there. Very effective in getting the job done. Very professional. I tell you what, some, I could not have done their job. I mean, there was one in there that she was collecting funeral debts. And I couldn't imagine what it would be like to ring up someone that's buried someone and say, you know, we're going to sue you if you don't pay for their funeral. Uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things. I was actually the soft touch in the office. I wasn't the hardcore. I mean, I oh, have so much respect for some of these people that the way that they could um, get things done. So... What affects your credit rating and your credit report is what comes from the debts of ordinary businesses. Anything that is involved with a bank, credit cards or any lending institution does not go on there. They do not put their debts or reveal those debts to any of these companies. They do it in-house and they only keep a record in-house. Now I'm going to share with you um, more experience because Mark Darwin and Adrian Brannock have said that when a debt collector rings up, they don't even have a right. They're a third party usurper. They don't even own the debt. So they've got no right to be calling. Well, if you take that attitude with your standard debt collector, you're going to end up getting into a lot of trouble and you won't know why. Well, here's why. Because, as I've just explained, the client rings up the debt collection agency and says, can you collect this debt on our behalf? The debt collection agency will say, sure, fine. We can do it. We can charge you a commission or on what is collected or you can go through a series of um, like the Duns Cash system where we'll send out a series of letters and if it's paid on the first one we don't take anything if it's paid on the second and third one we get X amount of dollars oh, oh no you don't even get X amount of dollars because you actually pay to get those three letters sent out and if you get paid, it's a bonus. That it's not going to cost you any more. I mean, these things might have changed a little bit over the years. This was a few decades ago. But the ability of anyone to do a credit check and see that ha has this person um, defaulted on a bank loan? Have they had a car loan they've defaulted on? Have they had um, credit cards they've defaulted on. You will never find out any of that information. It is only businesses um, that are sharing that information and it's going on to a central database that goes 
to adding to saying this is your credit rating but it is completely exclusive of the banks and their credit rating of you like right now I could take my credit rating and I could ch show people and they could look at it and they go wow nothing on there nothing bad ever and even if I had done that in succession for the last 20 years it would still say the same thing what you don't know is that well young family got sucked in you know the story goes that um, it w when I first uh, was pregnant we wanted to start a home have our own place and even though your better instincts tell you you're getting conned well we got in over our heads and the place where we had settled wasn't where my then husband could work so we moved we were paying expensive rents and a mortgage we couldn't afford both in the end we just said to the bank look take it never heard boo back from the bank nothing and it's never ever been listed on my credit rating and it never will now it will affect however if I go to the bank and want to get money because they'll have a record they have their own um, credit check that's why they don't use external credit agencies to check because they know on the big debts you know so what someone didn't pay their electricity bill or they had a disagreement with that particular creditor and they refused to pay it and in the end you know it gave them a bad name but that was a dispute now these are big debts people that have defaulted on their house their car loans credit cards all the money that you don't know that they've defaulted on and will never know unless you happen to be an ex bank star like Mark Darwin says and know what goes on inside the banking industry now you see I found this out not because I am an ex bank star but because I lived life and made mistakes and I was thinking wow this is really going to stuff up my credit rating and the next thing I look at my credit rating and it's like doesn't even exist there so when you've got people like Adrian Brennock who have done this to banks and lending institutions also Mark Darwin ex bankster and screwed banks over and been the smart ass with them then when he went to borrow money from banks <laughs> they laughed at him and said are you kidding you're setting us up to rip us off we're not going to fall for that one and even Adrian Brennock would not have been able to do that. That's why when he was asked in court how did he borrow the money, he couldn't even say the name of the, the broker that he used because if he did, it would reveal that this is a broker that you use if you cannot get a loan through a bank. So, you know, Adrian Brennock and Mark Darwin were both in the same position with the banks the banks knew fully well and the thing is that they turn around and they would tell people oh look we'll even write to places like Vida and stuff like that to make sure that it doesn't affect your credit rating and that it doesn't go on there and and then when it doesn't go on there they say see how effective we are um, it was never going to go on there in the first place banks do not list their bad debts it is however as they do say and part two of what I'm going to tell you of the other end of the story of well my marriage too <laughs> um, when my marriage fell apart I had a fairly large well for me considered a fairly large credit card debt any money owed is large now, I had a lot of worries on my mind looking after my two kids and you know just feeding them and trying to juggle everything and I couldn't so it had been six months before I'd made any payment on my credit card 
and I was really expecting a nasty letter, a phone call or something like that, you know, and because I didn't get it, I just kept putting it off because, well, paying the rent and feeding the kids was actually more of a priority than paying banks, you know. The banks weren't going to starve if I didn't pay them. And I know that we've all made choices like this, that you can only make money go so far and um, you find yourself in a hole. And sometimes you have to put your priorities first and everything else just gets pushed to the side. So I'd been in that circumstance where my credit card debt had been ignored. And all of a sudden it just stopped working because it was linked to my, um, my credit card was linked to my savings account card. My card stopped working one day that was linked to it and um, I hadn't heard anything about it. And by that time I got to the stage, well, you know, unless they ring me and ask me, I'll, I'll worry about it when it happens. And uh, then it must have been about, oh, a year later, I got a phone call from these people. They wanted to get me to, they said, ask my name and I said, yeah. And they said, can you confirm who you are? And I said, I've just said who I am. <laughs> Tell me what you want. Oh no, we need you to get, to confirm, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I've just told you who I am. And yeah, what do you want? Well, as it turned out, that what Mark Darwin says is correct. The bank will not even try and chase you for your credit card or any bank loans or anything like that. They will sell the debt on to somebody else at a specific rate. You know, like um, you might have a quarter of a million dollar mortgage and they may sell that de debt for, uh, you know, so many cents in the dollar and then claim it back as a bad debt as well. So when he says about how they're making money on bad debts, it's true. That part of it is very true. Now, I didn't realise it at the time when this person was ringing me that that was actually what had occurred, that they had actually bought my credit card debt and was trying to get me to pay for the debt. Now... I, all I had to do for them to form a contract with me, because I thought about this afterwards, I didn't know at the time, it was just like, I'm not going to give out my date of birth to anybody that rings up, I've said who I am, yeah, you're talking to that person, and if that's not good enough for you to actually, you know, tell me what you want, well, bugger you, I'm not going to talk to you. You know, so they blew it themselves in the end because I wouldn't confirm my date of birth. They they wouldn't proceed any further. because And then I thought about that afterwards and I thought, well, that's because they had to identify that I was that specific person. You see, you can only be identified as a specific person because of when you were born. You know, people can have the same name, but what are the chances of them having the same birthday and being born in the same place? So that's why we have a birth certificate to identify us as unique individuals. Not that we're slaves and owned because we have one. So, but what these people needed me to do was confirm my date of birth because I could have been, you know, any person that had that name. I had to be the specific one because of the um, personal, you know, releasing personal information. They couldn't do that. It's <laughs> they're the ones ringing me and they, they're telling me I've got to identify to them who I don't even know who they are. So, yes, you can imagine that didn't go down well and I don't even need to have training for, hey, I've just told you my name and if you won't talk to me, don't talk to me. No skin off my nose. And it wasn't. So as it turned out, that if I had given them my date of birth, that then would have confirmed that I was the individual that they were after. And that the debt that they had bought off the credit card was then something that they could then use to try and formulate a contract with me. 
And you have to listen here when I say, try to formulate a contract with me. Because my contract was with the bank. And I had not accepted these people that have rung me. I've never heard of them before. I cannot have made a contract with them in the very basic essence of any way, shape or form. But had I identified, yeah, I'm this person. Yeah, that's my date of birth. Yes, I owe that money. Yes, I will pay it back at this much. You are now for you have now formed an agreement with that particular party to pay back money that was never owed to them in the first place. This is a rather deceptive way that they get you to say, well, you have this debt. And you go, yeah, I do. And you actually think that they're an ordinary debt collector that is ringing up on behalf of the client, not that the client has sold the debt. And now that debt owns to, it belongs to this person. Now this person cannot take you to court with the debt that they've bought and try and sue you to get that money out of you. But if you identify who you are, your date of birth, confirm that, yes, I owe that money, and then make a commitment to pay that money back to who you think is the person that lent you the money, you've just formed a contract that is legally enforceable in law. Up until that point, these people on the phone had absolutely no legal founding. You can just hang up on them. But that's only if they have purchased the debt from a bank or a credit card, a personal loan or some other lending financial institution. So if you know that you owe money to any of those bodies and you get a phone call from anybody saying you owe this money and it's not the bank, it's because they have bought the debt. And what they're trying to do is identify you as a legal person and formulate a contract with you to pay that amount. And once you've formulated that contract to pay that amount, you then owe them. And that's the way it works. It will never get listed on your credit rating. But that's only with the banking institution and lending institutions. The normal debts that most of us um, understand do not come under the category of what Darwin, Mark Darwin and Adrian Brennock talk about. This is only a way to screw over the banks, which is why Adrian Brennock went to the police and said, I believe there's fraud on here. And if he was ever questioned that, well, it's not fraud, you spent that money, he's going, no, the banks are fraudulent. So in his way of explaining it, he wasn't lying when he said there's fraud because there's initial fraud with the banks in the first place. And in very few parts in all of the stuff that they talk about, do they say this doesn't work for everything? No, it only works in the very, very exclusive high-end debt area with credit cards, personal loans, mortgages and things like that. And interesting thing is that through e-searching the Queensland courts, I found that Eamon Lowe and Philip Dixon, uh, I can't remember the other one, um, have all had banks ask for money back and try to take possession of property because of default on loan payments. Oh, Mark Darwin was in that too back in 1993. So it was interesting to see that from everything that I've been looking at, because Adrian Brannock had perpetual trustees take that house of his back, and he was actually only renting that house out because he put somebody else in that house that um, he was then able to try and claim that tribal sovereignty around. He even got Mark McMurtry to submit evidence in his tribal name, <laughs> his fake tribal name. 
Okay, so I hope I've clearly explained how there's two very different debt collection um, that they're talking about to what we understand. It's not a matter of, did you think this, and oh, did you know it was that the way they say it. There is actually the two systems. You can't say that the other one doesn't exist because it all falls under the other category where any debt collector ringing you owns the debt and they're a third-party interloper. No, they are not. They are no more a third-party interloper than if you went to a lawyer to get a lawyer to send out a threatening letter to somebody to say, oh, you're bad-mouthing our client and we'd like you to shut up. That's no more third-party interloper. That is signed authority to act on the behalf of and completely legal and legitimate. And to not take it as that, you will find yourself in the poop. <laughs> so if people don't understand that there are, if I haven't explained it so that you can see that there is the banking, the whole banking debt collection side where nobody ever knows what's going on. And then there's the whole other debt collection side where they act on the behalf of the client to collect their debts. And they will get either a commission or a set amount to send out letters and perform certain tasks in an attempt to collect that debt. And most of them will also um, recommend that ones over a certain dollar value are only worth litigating on and they will uh, I know Dun & Bradstreet will follow that whole process through and deal with that all for the client as well. So it's a whole integrated process of managing your business using a debt collector like Dun & Bradstreet or Creditors Watch or any other place that offers these things. They do not own the debts. They are acting on behalf with legal authority to act on the behalf of the people that you are claimed to owe money to. Do not ignore those claims as, you know, they're invalid and they've got no right to make them. Because I think that's how come some have ended up in contempt of court. And how one guy tried to actually get off a debt because he bought parts. It's like, no, it doesn't work that way. And any of those bad debts will get listed against your credit rating. But none of your bad debts from your house from your personal loans, your car loans, your credit cards, lenders, none of them will ever be listed. The only time it will make a difference is like, well, with someone like Mark Darwin and Adrian Brennock, when they go to the bank to ask for money, they know, they know what money they didn't pay and how bad their credit rating with the bank and financial lending institutions is which is why Mark Darwin was knocked back in the first place. And Adrian Brennock said, oh, his rating was so bad that they said not a chance, so he had to do it. It was like, yeah, but you're in the same boat, mate. You are in the same boat. You are going through court being litigated by perpetual trustees because you wouldn't pay that back because you didn't think you had to. Bank's not going to lend you any money, mate. You know that. That's why he went to a broker, which I dare say is how they found someone like Derek Zillman, you know, that could get the funding and the people that were giving the money weren't going to ask too many questions about the person that just signed. Yeah, I can pay this back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, they are borderline um you know, if you can't be in a good financial position to actually borrow the money, if you've actually got to go and do that, uh, you're actually making bad financial decisions. You're just digging a deeper hole. You know, if you've stuffed up that badly to put yourself in that position, don't make the same mistakes twice. Come on. <laughs> but that's why there are schemes to recoup losses from potential investors. 
And uh, that's where it comes back to a pyramid scheme that feeds in from the investors back to a few at the top. Anyway, that's debt collection. That's what it looks like. If I haven't explained it, leave me a comment and tell me how I confused you and what I could explain a little bit more clearly. And on that note, I'll catch you next time. Bye.